Welcome back everybody to Dan Has Fun with me, Daniel. We're going to try third attempt at showing you how Olaf's superpower works. Because <laughs> uh, just like the world's worst teacher, I've brought it up on a couple of separate occasions and be like, hey, I'll show you the practical, and then proceeded to not be able to show you the practical. So we're going to do the Olaf mission in an attempt to rectify that third time's the charm. I don't actually like this mission very much, but we'll talk about it in a minute. What, what, what in Winter's name is that? Let's go take a look by skipping the rest of the text. So, T-15, mission 21. Dun, dun, dun. And Andy's here, because we all needed him for help. <laughs> what are you doing here? To help. And then Olaf being Olaf yet again is like, no, I don't, I don't need help, go away. And then Andy somehow suddenly becomes super intelligent and says this missile in 15 days is going to blow up. And then we find out, oh, he's actually not that intelligent. It was just Nell that said it and then Andy showed up. So, it's kind of funny. <laughs> Andy is not... Andy has a horrible anti-combo in this map, which we're going to talk about. That's one of the reasons why I don't like it. He is a big beefy boy. A giant missile. You can't do anything to attack it. The way you knock it out is to capture all eight of the cities surrounding it. 15 days to capture eight properties is actually quite strict. But this map effectively is split into thirds with these pipes in between. So side number one is going to be the money side. So Olaf captures some of these properties. I don't usually suggest capturing all of them. But he captures some um, to make money. There is a base or an airport, I guess, technically on this map, but you'd, it's not very useful. Um, but yeah, you can capture a couple of these so you can heal your troops. And then this is where your infantry is and your mechs to capture the cities. Pretty straightforward. Along this, we also have Andy's troops, which is purely air units and an APC. Why they wouldn't have brought Max for this, given the context of what the units are, who knows. Um, but realistically, he's not got a lot of opposition. He's got some crappy black hole units, and that's about it. So his job is to break through a pipe seam. Doesn't actually really matter which one it is. But he has to break through a pipe seam, careful about these missiles, so you tend to just be a chicken and go this way. But his primary function is to try and smack all of these heavy-duty units, primarily the medium tanks. Because Olaf, he does have medium tanks of his own, but he's outnumbered in terms of heavy equipment. It's also really frustrating that in this middle third, you get a missile and a rocket, but the terrain is plain, so they can barely move. <laughs> so that seems a bit dumb. Go Olaf. But yeah, in the middle is just a lot of heavy equipment and obviously the fight for the actual location of the map, you know, the end game. Bottom third of the map, there's a ton of dangerous units. Neotanks, bombers, battlecopters, medium tanks, rockets. There's even a base for the AI to build in. This bottom third is pointless. Absolutely pointless, because all that's going to happen is these units are going to very slowly wander. Well, the bombs going to come over quickly, but the tanks are going to wander over really, really slowly. You have nothing really to resist them with. Three anti airs versus three bombers and five battlecopters. There's only going to be one winner on this type of terrain, and it isn't going to be you. Um, so typically. You want to try and at least try and bait some of the bombers in on your mechs and then counter attack with your anti air if you can. Honestly, though, this side's pointless. You can go up here, break this pipe seam, and go through, but there's really no point. And if you do that, the AI can start putting its neo tanks through. The AI won't break the pipe seam by itself. At least, I don't think it does. So there's actually no point in doing this at all. Makes no sense to me, this map. This map is crazy, but not in a good way. So we're going to just have you hide. These guys are going to move slightly forwards, and that's about it. 
This is a very long mission. Not because many you know, that many days, but because there's just so many units to move in so many different fronts that I can guarantee we're going to be turning the animations off pretty early in this one. And let's hope we find some stuff to talk about because I don't think it's going to be all that thrilling just watching me... This is like inventory movement. It's like, oh, I've got to move uh, the uh, shelf storage of tanks over to B5. Uh, <laughs> it's just not, not very interesting. Alas, we'll get there in the end. I don't even know why you have a missile here. Like, you could start putting it down here to help protect, but... What, again, what's the point? And you can't use Andy's troops on Olaf's turn, remember? You still have to do them separately. Remember the uh, Yellow Comet Stronghold factory mission? Yeah, there's always that. So what we want to do is... We want to move our tanks first. And then we want to... We want to put our mechs in the APCs, because they're the slowest moving. While we wait for everything to get broken, we might as well start capturing a few of these things. But what we really want to do is get our rocket into place first. The rocket's the only unit in this side of the map that can really do a lot of damage to a pipe seam. The artillery can do some, but it's nothing on the rocket. So we want to make sure it gets into position early. And for this turn... That's it. Okay. Speaking of graphics, okay, we're still on Visual B. I did miss Andy's music. I do enjoy Andy's music a lot. So we do have to be careful because of this missile. But realistically, all we really have to do here is put a couple of battle copters over here to harass and that's it we just want to make sure we don't get shot down by this missile in error yeah I do like Andy's music especially in better I, I don't care for Olaf's music particularly I don't care for Olaf as a CEO really anything I don't like his design particularly I don't like his personality I'm indifferent to his music it's, no it doesn't do it for me doesn't do it for me at all this fighter, by the way, earns the award for being the most pointless unit on this map. It is absolutely irrelevant. We can also use this bomber, actually, to tear big chunks out of the wall. The problem, though, again, this is Andy. If this had been Max, that could have been a one-shot on the, on the pipe scene. But, nope. <laughs> So we're just going to do that. And then we'll move Andy's unit out of the way next to him. Uh, I don't want to do that because he'll get shot, right? Yeah. Nearly made the mistake immediately that I said I was going to try and avoid. And then turn. We're actually playing against Flak too. This isn't a Lash mission on Blue Moon. Thank goodness. This mission would be a hell of a lot harder if it was an, it's a Lash you were contending with. It's probably why they made it a flak mission, honestly. It's probably a balance thing. But yeah, the AI takes a long time to move and doesn't even move all its units. Yes, I'm pretty sure Grit's just going to say the exact same thing. Yep, eight, eight things around it. We already know, it's fine. We're probably not even going to capture that, it's just to do something. Okay, there we go. So next turn, I don't remember how much damage that does to a wall. So we will probably still attack that with Andy's Battlecopter. But we want to get units in and around the area. The anti are not quite as critical, honestly. But better to have them than not have them. And honestly, we're not going to be rushing our units in too aggressively because if we lose all of our mechs and infantry here it's game over so you do have to be a bit careful and we're just going to capture that because we can we now have to be super duper careful so between one two three four five six 
We want to move them like that. We are going to move our missile down there, even though I feel like it's going to be completely irrelevant. Just going to put our rocket there, just so it can get healed when it inevitably gets hit. And then we want to wait one more turn before we go into attack. Because if we're here, it'll be one, two, three, four, five. So we want to do this, this, that. Move this one forward. We don't want to move these tanks. And then for Olaf, that is it, that turn. And then Andy. Actually, what Andy can do here is get out of the way. His bomber can now take this out. And I think that friendly AIs can go through one of those units. We will see. <laughs> we're going to find out one way or the other. Unfortunately, we can't just run in with these battle copters because then they're just going to get annihilated by these anti-airs immediately. And there's a missile here too, so you have to be careful how you position these. But that's a safe tile. This is really irrelevant again like i said so we're just going to put it here and get it out of the way i don't even know why andy brings a fighter with him no idea well that's two for one because there's an ap there's an apc with an infantry in it so it's the one time going for the apc actually makes a lot of sense that was very kind of him wasn't it then we can just attack the recon it might chip a hit point off me yes it did doesn't matter <laughs> completely irrelevant and then for Andy that's it right so I know I was talking earlier about the anti-combo with Andy so when we eventually get it to snow with Olaf Olaf isn't affected however just because he isn't doesn't mean his ally isn't Andy is just as affected as anybody else would be by that snow. So you end up hemorrhaging movement from your own helper, effectively. <laughs> I'll show you in practice when we get there, because if we don't get to a superpower on this mission, I'm not doing the mission properly. Just going to capture that because we can. Now, they actually lined up in quite a good way for me as it happens. So we're just going to... Get rid of that battle copter, first of all. And then we want to attack this bomber. Unfortunately, I can't get through to the other bomber. But I can put this anti-air on a forest. So if it gets attacked by a bomber, it's not being killed unless Flak gets a very good blow. Which, you know, he could. He is Flak. He's got, you know, the luck guy. So we will see. This is the anti air I'm worried about because depending how smart or dumb the AI is, I could get completely smacked. But we will see. We will certainly see. Meanwhile, on the eastern front, we definitely want to go in this turn. We have to attack. Yeah, we have no option. I'm sure that Flat's going to get his superpower next turn. Like, it's just inevitable. So we want to go in and take out as many of his rockets as possible, because they're the ones that really cause issues, because you can't defend against them, right? So we want to get this in. This tank will... If The problem is... If I do that, it's going to get in, so it might actually be... It would be better if we could get an air unit in there, but then it's going to get hit by those rockets too. All these missiles. But that's this map in a nutshell. Something is going to die. It's just a choice of what is it going to be. That's about it. The one place where it's actually useful to have Andy's fighter actually is in this one very specific situation, though. Which is why I brought it down to the bottom of the map. It is almost completely useless, but there is one thing that it's actually not useless at doing as we take out this rocket. So we can put Andy's fighter 
here. And if we do, unless Flat again gets an incredibly lucky blow with his anti-air, it ends up blocking the entire bottom path. Which is amazing. But it is weird that we are intentionally not going to put a unit here. We're just going to accept that our tank is probably going to get hammered. But we do have the chance at least to move up all of our heavy units. Uh, don't put it there, put it there. And in all honesty, they might as well capture this stuff. There's nothing else they can be doing right now. I am going to move this down ahead of time, though, um, to there, just in case bad things happen. We're not going to attack that pipe seam. We are going to put our artillery there, though. So they will get penalized for leaving that unit there. Move this APC over here, get this over there. And then that should be it. I'm sure he's got his superpower already. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> by a mile. Okay, so Olaf, well, that's your lot. And then we're gonna do the... There you go. <laughs> it's so rude. But that's all we need to do there. Uh, we are going to not put that unit there. Oh, I nearly pressed the button of doom. Now, I want to get this out of the way in case I happen to get shot down. Because it is distinctly possible. There we go. Honestly, Annie doesn't even need to do this. I'm just doing it because I think that's what the map feels like it wants you to do. Well, there's actually no need to do this. These guys are completely harmless. Like it's, again, it's not a headquarters map. There's no, not even a route condition in this one. There's no HQ capture. There's no route condition. I'm pretty sure you have to capture all eight of these properties or else it's game over. But I believe for this turn, that is Shalot's. And this could be quite painful. <laughs> definitely on the bottom side of the map. Let's hope you don't crush best flak. Let's definitely hope not. Let's see what he does. If I've got any anti-airs left on the bottom map by the end of this turn, I'll be amazed. But we'll see. Well, that guy's dead. Unless I get, he, he gets a spectacularly poor roll, but no. He actually got a reasonably good roll on that. The way that luck works, I believe having a massively damaged unit actually reduces his ability to get particularly good or bad luck. I think. I don't know a huge amount about the maths on how that works, but that was a really poor roll for him. This has gone spectacularly so far. I'm actually amazed how well this has gone. But yeah, if, if Lash had been the CO for this, all of those units on the bottom of the map could have just gone straight through. And spectacularly ruined our day. But that was pretty good. He didn't even attack us enough to charge our bar the full way. So our old man is going to have to yell at his snow cloud some more for another turn or two. Um, so, for now then, he does get his 10% bonus to defense. So that's a thing to be aware of still that Flat gets. But now that we're attacking, we'll do a bit of... That was a horrible roll for me, and a fairly good roll for him. But I don't really want to combine these. It's this 9 hit point bomber that I can't really do anything about. Uh, this guy needs to bravely run away, though. I can't afford a fighter or an interceptor, so it doesn't really matter at this point. Honestly, we're better off probably killing our own unit doing this, but maybe we'll get lucky. Go down to one hit point. Okay, we didn't kill our own unit. That's awesome. Now we can use our superpower. And it's definitely worth doing mid-turn. So our old guy finally gets to yell at snow clouds. There is only one downside, though, remember? About movement penalty. So, Andy, I hope you're happy not being useful. <laughs> Thank you.
So we get to finally use Winter Fury. And this is going to take a moment while it does two damage to every unit individually. Thank goodness it doesn't actually have to do like the battle screen for that. And now it's snowing. So I'm going to show you when it's Andy's turn how bad that is for other AIs or the commanders in general. Um, so first of all, that's not quite a kill. This guy can't move anyway, so might as well get you in there. It's going to be overkill, but I might just use the rocket to kill that anyway, just so I can get that as an open space. Because really what we want to do, as much as possible, we want to rush back here and attack the rocket. There's only one rocket left, so if we can get in here and kill it, we're going to be in for a good, well at least a lot better time. We can't get in here and kill this stuff though right now, but we're fine with that. These guys are just going to get blocked. And that is their only purpose right now. This tank is actually going to get out of the way. Because this medium tank can do just about enough to take him out. It is a little bit of a shame that I'm having to use my superpower after his on this occasion, but there's not much I can really do about it. Because I bet, yeah, we can't take that out. We still want to get in, though. We still want to get in here, preferably. Because we have to start doing something to him. So we're still going to do that. Take a hit point. We're going to get hit by rockets. It's inevitable. But we do want to start packing that up. And we want to put our regular tanks over here. And finally, we now want to start getting our infantry and mechs in the vicinity. I don't know why I clicked wait when I could have just done what I did, but whatever. And I know it's not the most efficient use, but we're just going to do that as well. This guy can't even move this turn. It's fine. Okay, so they're all blocked down there. This guy, there's no point even moving him, is there? So that's fine. And now we can go to Andy's turn. Now, Andy doesn't take two damage like Flak did because he's a friend, you know, he's on your side. But this bomber has seven movement. It now has three movement, effectively, in the snow. Because everything is taking an extra, you know, movement point to use. And then we don't have enough movement to move the fourth tile because we only have one movement left. Which is a little bit unfortunate, but what are you going to do? You can, if you want to be really brave here, you could take this out and see if you what unit he moves in. Which, honestly, at this point, I'm tempted to do. I'm just going to clear this open because I want him to move units in so I can start attacking them with my indirects. That's too close. That would be within five. Yes, we don't want to do that. So we'll wait in place. This can just go here. And um, we'll just put the APC there. That's absolutely fine by me. And then we'll have our battle copters very slowly come over here and annoy this artillery because they have nothing else to do. And then turn. This turn's going to hurt a little bit as well. But it won't hurt too, too much because I now have the 10% defense bonus and he doesn't. Bye, anti -air. You did so well to not kill yourself on the last turn. Yeah, there we go. He's going to send in the tank to attack mine. But that now means I have a unit I can kill in one hit, probably, with most units. So that's absolutely fine with me. He's going to waste a couple of battle copter turns going after this mech. Oh, he didn't even... Yeah, he actually didn't even waste two battle copters turns. He didn't bother with the other one. Don't even know why. Okay. That works for me. Okay, it's no longer snowing. So Andy's no longer going to be crippled the same way that Flak is, which is nice. If I could one-shot that, it would be really helpful, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to or not. Let's see if we can. It's going to be touch and go. Oh, it was, it was go. We're on the go side, which is awesome. 
this is also going to be close, but if we don't kill him, it actually doesn't matter. No, nope, we didn't. It's fine. We can just use that weakened tank to take that out. That's not an issue at all. If we're going to get a bad luck roll, this was the time to get it. So I am perfectly good with that. And we can throw that in. The question is, do we want to? I might do this one first. Put that in. We still can't kill this unit, which sucks, but that's fine. We can at least take out this anti-air. We can put in another medium tank, and then this side's going to be pretty much safe. At least for the near future. Okay. So he has two eights and one three-point medium tank. It's not going to be enough. We can even start capturing this property at this point, because this guy is safe. So that's perfectly fine. We use our rocket to hopefully take out this anti-air. Yep, we didn't need a particularly great look roll to do that, but we need at least something. So now all we need to do is try and carve a path through to this rocket. And the way we're going to do that is, first of all, by impaling this medium tank, so it can't do anything to us. Yes, the rocket is going to shoot something, it's inevitable, but we can conveniently get over here and hit this medium tank anyway. We actually want to go on the bad terrain here, so that it boxes in the medium tank. Got a pretty poor roll on that too. That's fine. That is fine. We can put the nice thing about this too is theoretically, yep, this tile safe, so I can use the battle cops to clean this up. Well, this guy can be reached now, so you might as well put the rocket in place. And then because there's no purpose on this map to having money, we're just going to build a fighter. At least get some power points by you know taking this out. Six hit points. I'm just going to take out this bomber. I know it's overkill, but it's a power. It's towards the power stat. There we go. I don't really want to put the mech there yet, but I think I probably should. It's a little bit dangerous because the rocket's still there. Mm. Yeah, we're going to wait for now. But I am going to move this artillery to here. So that my infantry can start wandering now. Next turn we should be able to do pretty much everything we need to do from a capture perspective, at least on this side. I think we'd be pretty safe at that point. We are going to put this tank here temporarily as well. This tank might as well go away and heal really has no purpose otherwise and this anti-air I'm going to put here just so the rocket has another target to shoot at because I would much rather they attack my anti-airs than anything else my anti-airs are pretty much useless on this map and might as well take this out as well not that we needed to but again it's fine. You can go around here eventually and take out this pipe seam and attack him. But I've never felt the need to do that. Um, no, I'm going to do that. If I don't quite kill him, that puts me in a slightly awkward spot. And I didn't quite kill him either. I don't want to get shot. This does mean that his medium tank can now technically move a tile, but what's he going to attack? A full health medium tank, a nine health medium tank, or two battle copters. Both are terrible for him, so. Still have to be careful with this bomber, though. <laughs> the bomber is surprisingly useless at this task. It's pretty good at taking out the pipe seam, 
but it's not very good at anything else. It's just too fragile. Conveniently for me too, Flack was half a star away. Oh, perfect. The rocket is being done. And going for the anti-air. That is the best target it could have gone for. Bar none. See you later, Mr. Mech. You did everything you could. The mechs captured the airport. That's all we can ask for on this map down here. Meanwhile, that mech is just going to annoy battlecopters until it dies. And here comes the two useless Neo tanks. <laughs> is he going to build another infantry? Yeah, it's all the AI does on this map. It just loves infantry. Well, at least we can start cleaning this up. See you later. I really love how the fighters look in this game. Especially for Blue Moon. This might not be a full kill, but it's going to be pretty close. We actually might be in the amazing scenario. It, it's very unlikely, but there is a distinct possibility that this mech might actually live. If the AI is really stupid and goes for the rocket instead. So it doesn't matter either way, but it'd be interesting. This artillery can't do anything. Can this rocket do anything? Nope. This one certainly can't. Okay, so this turn then, what we want to do is... First of all, take out this rocket. And that means all the, all the land units can now come in in here pretty much with impunity. As you say, as soon as we take out the missiles, obviously all the air units can as well. I can't take it out, but it's going to make it inconsequentially weak. That's fine. Even the anti-air might be able to take that out at this point. Because I just wanted to use this almost full health medium tank to attack the missile, speed this up. Because it's going to heal next turn and get back to 6, but then I can hit it again and kill it, so... It's fine. Actually, let's just use the seven hit point tank. Just in case the anti-air didn't actually do it. There we go. It's going to be a long old episode, this one, isn't it? <laughs> uh, do that, because I want to start getting captures going on. All right, so on this front, then, this medium tank has to go. There's no doubt about it, it has to go. There we are. Okay. And then we should use this medium tank to attack this medium tank. There we are. So that one's pretty much worthless as well at this point. We still can't bring our APC down here. There's still too much going on for that. But we can definitely do this. Hopefully we don't get a minimum roll. Perfect, we got to four instead of five. So we're good there as well. You can bring these rockets in. You can even put the artillery there for next turn. And then what we want to do is move that over there. This APC is actually going to come around. That tank has nothing to do, I guess, eh? No, nothing. And we definitely don't want to make it snow right now. We don't want to punish Andy further. Although, let's be real, Andy can't do anything this turn. So, all he's going to do is... I'm actually going to leave this intentionally in range. Because I want Andy to get a little bit more CO power in case we can, yeah, do anything with him. But this six hit point missile, unless Flat gets an astonishingly good roll, I don't think he can even do it with six hit points, but... We'll see. Let's see what he does. Meanwhile, these guys are actually running out of ammunition. Honestly, I'm just going to... Once that one runs out of ammo, I'm just going to combine them. So here, here we go. Let's see what he does with this... <laughs> Just to think how big his fists must be. I don't have particularly big hands, but like you put this relatively in front of me and you then you think how big his hands are. <laughs> you would not want to get punched by that guy. Oh, they have gone after the rocket. That's adorable. That was a good roll. 
His first one wasn't, but that was a good roll. It's nice that his turn's a bit quicker now as well than it was the first time he did this. But yeah, his unit's back here, you know, on the middle front, have no idea what to do. Yes, I know. Honestly, at this point, we can't use his superpower, and he's not doing anything, right? Honestly, even without Andy at all in this mission, really nothing would change. You're doing the exact same thing, so. Okay, at least we get to see the snow again. So we get to yell at some snow clouds some more. You kids get off my snow lawn! I'm not going to do that. I thought about it, but no. These me, these me, these are the attacks are finally like, sup, <laughs> we're here. <laughs> Took us a while, but we're here now. Really, the only, you could then burst the pipe seam down at the bottom to try and get a bigger power score, but that sounds like a lot of work for not a lot of games, so I'm, I'm good. I'm just going to chip this down. We might get a lucky roll, but if not, it means any unit can take this medium tank out. And then we're just going to see you later, Mr. Anti-Air. I love its red kind of tendrils coming out of the Anti-Air. I just think it looks fun. There we are. So the entire bottom side of the middle section is clear and the top is not far away either. We only have one unit to go and that is now zero units to go. I do remember this mission being harder than what I'm actually doing right now, but I don't know, we're all good. Get that plated, get that set up. We'll just wait a turn so we can get that out of the way. And honestly, at this point, there's nothing really left for him to do. Other than just start to capture. Like, the extra part of this map is not going to take very long. That's why I haven't split this into two parts. At this point, there's really nothing for them to do. Are you going to let me join these together? Nope. Why would you? I mean, just for fun. Why not, right? But yeah, there's nothing else that Andy needs to do. I guess we're just not going to see an Andy even regular power. Not a huge surprise, but what can you do? I'm amazed that this rocket's still alive. Usually the AI so aggressively goes after the rocket, it pretty much ignores your anti-airs, but it determined that today it just wanted to leave the rocket be for a bit. Oh wow, he actually built a unit that wasn't an infantry. Miracles do happen. Uh, I'm just going to plonk that here so it's in the way. And then this guy can move for a second. There we go. Because I'm assuming then the AI is still going to want to go after that rocket, so I'm going to leave it out there to see if the Neo tanks will go up. And then we can start going into indirect range. Which would be nice. Can't quite take that pipe seam out, but I can take it out with a bellocop the next turn so I can send the uh, bomber straight down. So, still time worth spending. Uh, might as well put that there. Just going to combine them. Not going to need them for anything. Capture. 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 World's worst song. <laughs> it's the capture song. Oh, I don't even need to do that. There you go. Bob's off. All right. So we have one, two, three properties captured. We have more money than you would ever need. So we can build a bomber next turn if we want to. And now Andy can just have a little bit of fun. Maybe we'll get a little power out of him. We'll see. But yeah, this is just what you do for a bit more. I've kind of thought about it. 
I was like, ah, originally I wasn't going to bother doing this, but I might as well at least show you what you can do, I guess, right? I mean, you, you're watching this video presumably to see what you can do, <laughs> so I guess I might as well show you, huh? There we go. This guy is now out of... I'm not even going to bother moving these, there's no point. Not going to waste your time or my own. But yeah, it's funny, he has like 50,000 gold, and yet... Always been building pretty much his infantry, and then he built one artillery last turn. It makes no sense to me. Like, that's the AI algorithm working. Working. <laughs> Might as well just run and see you later. Build a bomber, because you can. Run away. And then we want to make sure that's captured. Make sure that's captured. Make sure that's being captured. We're actually going to complete this map with a bit of time to spare. Which is not the typical for me. So that's pretty fun. This has been pretty darn efficient. Not the most efficient, but it's been a lot more efficient than I usually play this mission at. Okay. End turn. And now Andy can have a little bit of fun. There we go. Bombs away. See you later. Neo tanks only have fractionally more defense than a regular medium tank does. So it still takes a heck of a lot of damage from bombers. The battlecopters really have a hard time plugging away at these guys. They don't take really anything back, but. There we go, and enter. We could use our little power if we wanted to, but there's no point right now. He's gonna use his though. Yeah, those fists. <laughs> oh, there's his anti-air finally. Now he's decided, oh yeah, actually there's a lot of air, a lot of air use. We should probably deal with that. See. So, I probably need to deal with that a while ago. Okay, so... We are going to win next turn. Only one turn away. Might as well shoot at it because we can. And just for the last few shots, I'm just going to take the visual off because video's getting a bit long and I appreciate that if you're still hanging around and you watch this long love you, awesome, appreciate it hopefully that, uh, hopefully if you hung around this long, you must be liking something that's going on, right? So, I appreciate it really, really do okay, there we go I'm not even going to bother tidying the rest of that up. There's no need to do that. Okay, we're just going to capture this, and then we're going to move on. <laughs> Blast it. Get it, because it's a missile. Yeah. And the only reason why I'm not skipping the text here is... Right, we did it. Of course, I could have done it myself. <laughs> He's not wrong. But be a nice person. Uh, I even called Andy a whelp. Which isn't exactly an endearing term, right? Now, I don't like I don't like Olaf. He's a bleh. Bleh. <laughs> bleh is all I can say. Uh, bleh moon. Anyway, mission's done. We'll probably do Grit's mission next time, try and keep it in order between the COs. We'll take things from there. If you, like I said, if you hung around, really appreciate it. Like and subscribe if you want to. I always like to hear what you got to say about videos or life in general, so throw a comment down if you want to as well. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for watching the video.